Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, replacing teeth. Uh, Dr. Martinez, you have mentioned how devastating it can be to have missing teeth. Basically, you, you, you not only don't chew good, but you start losing other teeth because of it, and, and perhaps more importantly, uh, um, uh, your mouth might get out of alignment and you might get uh, headaches, back pains, all kinds of things. Either way, when you probably, I assume, you'll perhaps also look a little bit more ugly and crooked, you know, because the whole thing gets shifted, right? Exactly. We tend to compensate. So right. that's very, very common. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the two or three or whatever major ways which there are to replace the teeth. And give us a very short overview of each pro and cons of the major ways on how to replace the teeth, will you? Sure, I will let you know. Um, there are, the best way to replace teeth in this day and age uh, would be considered um, implants. Implants, is, um, it's, it's a titanium screw that's actually implanted in, into the jaw, and on top of that we put a post and a crown, and it is probably the state. Of, it is the state of the art. It's the standard of care. Uh, consider the standard of care, and uh, we have to let people know. I, I like the, the implant itself because you don't have to touch any of the teeth next to it. Traditionally, the second other option to do um, to replace teeth, missing teeth, are with bridges. And bridges, for whatever they are, they've been great uh, tools to replace teeth um, for the. Since I've been a dentist, for sure, and even longer. But um, one of the disadvantages, I guess, if you will, would be to that you to pre to prepare a, for a bridge, you would ha you have to touch the teeth on either side, um, which essentially you're condemning yourself, I guess, to always having a bridge in your mouth. Once, if this bridge fails, the next time you have it replaced, you could only get it replaced with the bridge. So you're actually um, locking pulling, yourself into or, always or, having a bridge. Or by pulling those two teeth, which you basically, when you said touching, meaning grinding them down to a little stick so that you can put a crown over it or, or a cap, as you call it, right? So if you then right. ever wanted to replace it, you would have to put three implants in it, right, instead of just one. Um, if you ever needed to replace the whole, let's say it's, let's say we're talking about a three-unit bridge, mm -hmm. the conventional three-unit porcelain bridge that attaches to one tooth, then you have the missing tooth, and then it attaches to the other tooth. Right. If you ever lost exactly, if you ever lost one of the attachments, you're essentially would be losing the bridge because that attachment would be gone. So then you're talking about a possibly increasing and in going to a four unit bridge um, to attach it to the other, uh, to the one that's in front of this one. So if you can see what I'm talking about, if you can visualize it, I'm a very visual person and I'm, I'm sorry I can't get, draw a diagram here, but if you see what I'm talking about is you're already kind of, you're saying, you know, you're hoping that this bridge lasts, and in the, and it's, you know, we we do a very good, we do very good work, and we can say that it could last you eight to ten years, but you're already attaching yourself to another bridge if this one fails, or the porcelain doesn't look good, or the gums start receding, and you need a bridge. Right. Now, the advantages of the the implants are that they're separate entities. There are separate entities. If the implant would fail itself, it's only one entity that fails, not a whole three-unit bridge. But again, and by and by in in by by apparently proven track record over the last close to 20 years or something like that, uh, an implant fails a lot less than a bridge. Is that true? Correct, correct. Because you're 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 asking a lot more of your own body to retain an implant, where with a bridge you're asking a, a lot of your um your technician that's doing it, your dentist that's doing it to make sure that you are provided with a very good sealed bridge. And then also home care. That's probably 75% of maintaining a bridge is how you, your home care. Um, and people have the misconception also that as long as you have a bridge or as long as you have a crown or you, you know, I just had a filling done six months ago that you cannot get a cavity anymore, and that is really totally wrong. As long as there are teeth in the mouth, or tooth structure in the mouth, it doesn't matter what, you, if you leave bacteria in there, you will get recurrent decay. And this is where most of the failure of a bridge comes from. And people don't understand that, that it doesn't matter how good of a bridge we do, it's home care that is primarily the the most important part of it. In fact, um 
tell me whether that's true. If you have a bridge, so you have two teeth, you grind them down, you put a cap over it, and you hang a third tooth in between, or for that much, two teeth in between, whatever it might be, uh, that area is kind of one, almost like a melted or welted piece together, and it's very difficult to floss there because there's no, nothing to go in between, which apparently... Uh, if the home care, if, if a guy like me who's a little bit on the slappy side, you know, again, like my wife is chewing uh, the first piece of steak while I have it all finished, she also is still brushing teeth when I finish showering and shaping and all kinds of things. Um, so if you look, so so for me to fiddle on a bridge and clean the gums, um, let me tell you, I would I. I would probably miss it more than half of the time because I would just be too lazy, and that would bring me gum disease um, in a major way, and which would make the bridge failing. Yes or yes or that no? Could potentially yes, yes, you're absolutely right, and yes, that could potentially lead to all the issues I was talking about, where gum disease or, or d recurrent decay on these teeth. But um, you know, when you have a, I don't want people to get deterred from having. Um, a bridge done as well. Bridges, when they're done properly, there's enough room for you to floss, there's enough room for people to keep the gums clean and, and, and all that that is done. It's just that it is, you are compromising the teeth next to it um, and you're attached by the fact that you're attaching to them. So the care has to be extraordinary. And yes, maybe guys are not as, as good as uh, when it comes to taking care of their mouth when flossing and brushing. Um, and you do have to use floss writer. So people sometimes they, they say, you know, no, I don't, I really don't want to go that route. Um, and then the third way of replacing teeth, which is also very commonly done, but you, it's not just replacing one tooth, is uh, with partial, removable partial dentures. Um, and typically the removable partial dentures are made for people that are missing several teeth. It really doesn't make sense to replace a one missing tooth with a partial. Although I've seen it. Um, because people don't want to end up having to have the other teeth ground down, as they say. But um, I, I've seen them, but I think it, it's really not uh, the best way. It's it's a good way if you if you have no other choice, you know, because we want to retain the space. We were trying to maintain all the functions that we already discussed, but um, it isn't the best way. Um, it is the, one of the better ways financially to replace teeth that you're, if you're missing a few teeth, and also. Um, Again, a lot of insurance companies still to this day are not uh, covering a lot of the implants, implant treatment. They, they're they leaning more towards the fixed bridges that I talked about or the partial dentures. And a lot of people, of course, see that as, uh, which is unfortunate, but they have to see that, you know, the, the first question they ask is, is my insurance going to cover it? And they pretty much determine what treatment they're going to get based on what the insurance is going to cover. Sure. I got it. Well... That gives us a very good overview. So we have the high uh, and latest technology, which is already 10, 20 years old also, which is uh, right. implants. Um, we have crowns and bridges, which have done for a very long time a very good job. And based on what you say, still do a very good job. You just need to be then a little bit more... Uh, big-headed in terms of maintaining your, your teeth. Uh, that's a little more difficult, but definitely can be done. Um, and they do do a good job. Uh, they fail on an average a little faster than the implant, is what you say, simply to the structure. It can't hold so much so long, and that's all there is to it. And then we have the partial, um, which is, you know, at least putting the teeth in and at least keeping the space between the teeth uh, while, uh, you know, while they're missing. Thanks a lot, Dr. Martinez. Thank you very much. Thank you.